This is Twit. There is one thing I think we need to talk about, and that is the fact that you are a geek. You are a huge geek. You are a real geek. In fact, we have people in the chat room saying, you know, he doesn't come across to me as an actor, and that's a good thing. It's, yes, because you are actually a geek, and we can prove that because of upgrade required. This, mm. I, I love this. Uh, the mission statement, you said, you're on a quest to render disabilities, disabilities obsolete through technology. Tell me about <laughs> upgrade required. Uh, this is a well. This is I met this guy Q, uh, who's in the who's in the suit at the back there, um, because I had put out this silly little video that said that I had wanted to be Han Solo, but I ended up being C three PO. It was sort of a science fiction, like you know, like taking stock of your life and and all this kind of stuff. And he got back and said, "Well, you know, I wanted to move. I can't, so I want to be a cyborg." <laughs> okay. And and I was like, "What the heck? You know, nerd alert! Don't make eye contact. Avoid this one." But then I, I was sort of drawn in, and I checked out some of his stuff, and I was so intrigued by this kid who, who, um, you know, was was just, you know, just out there, you know, like making a name for himself on YouTube. He was actually he's actually debunking religious organizations, which which was which was interesting. At like at. 14 or whatever like like going head to head too. with yeah, that's fine. with hypocrisy basically of, of these of these organizations um well, some of them and um uh and he um so I just got in touch with him and I you know I I was I started talking to him and I my wife jokes that I was kind of jealous because there's this guy who has access to the complete the, you know the collective knowledge of the human race and he's plugged into this thing thanks to the internet most of the day and all the boring administrative stuff, as I would call it, you know, like living your life is is has to be by nature of his disease. It has to be looked after by uh, other people or technology or whatever. And so as a result, he's to me, he's almost more human than human. Like he's he's the quintessentially what us humans like to think of themselves as, as these thinking, brilliant machines that can solve any problem, you know, not think of ourselves as machines, but you know, that we, we like to think of ourselves as these sort of intelligent, intelligent beings really, you know, um, you know, uh, and, and, and that strangely, that really caught my attention. And we ended up talking a lot. And my wife eventually said, look, you know, you talk to this guy more than you talk to half your friends. Why don't you, why don't you make a film about this? And I thought, Oh, fantastic. But weirdly for the wrong reasons. I, I, I didn't wasn't so interested in making the movie as I was interested in making the robotics and stuff that would be required for this. So as the years have gone, I've I've sort of changed my perspective on it. And now I really want I really want a Mythbusters style half hour where the family can sit down. But instead of, you know, and we'll do a lot of blowing up things and burning things and things as well. But but with an eye towards, you know, using some of these technologies that are available to to solve disability related problems and they're so cool because like who doesn't want a robot like who didn't grow up wanting a robot that that's happening now that stuff's available now and i keep meeting my idea behind it was that with upgrade i kept meeting people like q or people who were interested in helping people like you or people with other disability related things or people with other technologies that they wanted to use towards solving problems in the world and i thought what a great sort of you know, I mean, it's it's a film because that's what I do. But it, the reality is I want it to be more than that. And I'm still struggling to figure out what that is. And part of an offshoot of that was trying to bring this sort of my excitement about technology to kids so that when they saw when they see that they're building things in school, they can be building things that will change the world or change the world for people that they know. You know, we there's a there's a kid in our class who who has a partially formed arm. And apparently she's not doesn't like talking about it and uh, in fact doesn't wear her prosthetic arm. And, you know, we're in we're in doing our tech terrorist thing in one day and she says, you know, I've got a robotic arm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I didn't even notice. Like, she just wore long sweaters and stuff. And uh, I said, oh, cool. Like, where like would you at home or what's the what's the she goes, no, it's in my locker. I was like, well, go get it. What are you doing? So she comes up, clunks this thing down on the on the on the desk and goes like, why can't mine do that? Because we had this little like claw that could work on its own and it could rotate around and stuff. And she's stuck with this like 1970s, you know, prosthetic that doesn't even match her skin tone. You know what I mean? Like it was just, it was like, it was frustrating to her and to me that that this stuff wasn't available to her. So, and you know, and that got her excited about programming. 
Like, where's that connection? You know what I mean? Like, she started programming this robotic arm to do things, and she went from wanting to be a soccer star to wanting to be a, a programmer and and a soccer star. So, um, you know, it's just that kind of stuff. These things keep coming up. I keep finding people who I go, oh, I, you know, I know somebody who could help with that, and we sort of put it together. And I, I, so, so that's that's what upgrade required is. Upgrade required is a sort of a series. I think that will hopefully shine some light on this and get some attention and make people realize how exciting and fun this stuff can be. But that my ulterior motive is to actually be able to 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 do this for real and continue doing it. I, I have to say, you've got me excited. You've got a lot of people in the Twit community excited about that because that's, oh, good. that's exactly well, what I need we want to see. We want to see something like, I mean, we love builders. We love Mythbusters. If you can combine that, we're in. Well, that's it. And also just to show that everyone can sit down and watch because I think it's important the, you know, that kids see, I, I, I think it's less important to teach kids how things work exactly than it is just to inspire them so that they understand that they can make these things work or that they can do these things. You know, there's such a focus on getting the nuts and bolts of the essential out of the way. But I think at the risk of losing that sort of that childish, the science fiction wonder of creating your own worlds, you know what I mean? And that's where this stuff comes in. This is, this is science fiction, but it's happening. You know, like, you know, like EA are building uh, prosthetic arms that are straight out of out of out of their games, you know, straight out of their cyborg games and stuff, which now I, I can't remember the name of it now. Is it Deus Ex or X Deus? Right, or what right. I, could, I never get that right. Ex Machina, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like that's like this stuff is happening. Iron Man, you know, like like, you know, uh, uh, you know, Iron Man shows up and, and delivers a, a, a an Iron Man arm. You know what I mean? Robert Downey Jr. is there giving kids arms i like what like what this is a world this is a world i want to be a part of you know 